Is it wise to separate the Lords from the Commons? And should we return to a sort of travelling Parliament that we've seen in centuries past? Well, I'm delighted to be joined in the studio now by Lord Norton, an author, academic and Conservative peer, and of course, world-leading expert on constitutional affairs. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, There seems to be a lot of consternation within the Lords about this suggestion that uh, you all might be sent off to various cities around the country. How would it work? Well, it probably wouldn't. That's the problem. It's not so much the location per se. It's the very point you touched upon at the end of the introduction, which is separating the Lords and the Commons. Mm. So it's not so much a, a question of achievability. There are all sorts of enormous practical problems, but one of desirability. Is it desirable? And from a constitutional point of view, no, because you separate the two chambers, you strengthen government, the executive, at the expense of Parliament. Now, if we're going to move out, it means not just the Lords, but the Commons and government. You could make an intellectual case for a new capital, a a, a Bonn or Brasilia, purpose-built for that, Mm. for delivering that. But we need to be together together, because the Lords and Parliament is where Parliament is because of government, Mm. where government is. So you need to be together. And certainly for the two chambers to operate effectively in scrutinising and being fairly agile Mm. in challenging government, you need to be close to one another, separating the two chambers, rather like during the pandemic, when we had lockdown, we had to meet virtually. Mm. Now, that was a success technically, but constitutionally was highly problematic Mm. Because it made it very difficult for art to do a job effectively. And I suppose so much of it, especially when the Commons and the Lords aren't agreeing as much as they might have previously done in decades past, um, so much of that is about the conversations and the interactions between individuals. And and indeed, uh, the the key word, those conversations, because it's not, if you like, the public clash between the houses, because technically we can communicate by message. It's the very point you made. It's actually between the formal stages, what happens informally, Mm. meeting members of one's own house, but meeting members of the other to discuss matters. And that's really the the driving force. Mm. So you can meet, but just serendipitously meeting members of the chamber, highly informative Mm. information exchange, invaluable for knowing what's going on. Is there 